Well, with only five games left in the Bundesliga season, we find ourselves in the Europa League spot. Can we stay there? We will. If we pick up wins in both of the games in today's episode, it will lock us in for Europe for our second season in the Bundesliga. But before then, we've got a player on the next gen list and also, hopefully, a nice youth intake. <laughs> Welcome to episode 69 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and come out today we take on RB Leipzig as well as Eintracht Frankfurt in the Bundesliga and off the back of that we've only have three games left in the season I think. With wins in both of those games we would have secured European football for next season. Also we've got a player on the next gen list and as you can see on screen for the first time in a little while actually a nice youth intake so if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but before we recap our results off the back of yesterday's episode, where unfortunately we got knocked out in the quarters of the DFB Pockle, largely thanks to a red car, but bounced back nicely with a win in the Bundesliga over by a Leverkusen, if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner, as I said, results. We'll get to those off the back of that shortly. But first up, we go back in time just a little bit to have a look at this season's youth intake. As you can see, five decent players that we did get through our youth intake this year. Looks like one of our better ones at the club for a little while. And a player with quite good potential, especially because these days we are up in the Bundesliga and Johan Zempik, we do have a player with the same last name at the club a couple of years ago, but did let him go going into the start of this season. But here's a striker, can also play as an attacking midfielder. And with that passing, he could be a player that does end up a little bit further back than his more natural position. But at the moment, he looks like a striker. One and a half star current ability, so regional league is standard, but four and a half star potential. He could be a useful player for us in the Bundesliga in a couple of years' time. So hopefully... Johan Zempic is a player who can feature in a couple of years' time. In this save and going down a bit further, some players with not quite as much potential, but still, they could be useful as squad players for us here. At Lokomotiv Leipzig, another striker, come attacking midfielder, come left winger there, and Felix Kruger again. Decent passing. The finishing is actually a little bit better than Zempic from what I saw before, so maybe he could end up being a bit more of a striker. Then our star graduate from this year's youth intake, but he is a player with the same current ability, just a little less potential, is Felix Kruger. And alongside that, a couple with one star current ability, one with four star potential is Ronnie Van Blazinski. He is a left back, so that could be quite useful. Good wing backs can be hard to find, albeit only four star potential. We'll see if he can make his way into the first team squad in a couple of years' time here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, but a player with already a couple of good yellow attributes there on the mental side, so hopefully he'll develop nicely, and alongside him, a few players with three and a half star potential, a midfielder, probably an attacking midfielder for the system we use in Sasha Bamberger, and alongside that, we do have Marcel Flochois, who is a defensive left winger, obviously, we're going to train him up to hopefully be an inside forward on attack, but those are the star graduates from this year's youth intake, obviously, Johan Zempik, is the best of those, but a couple of other ones who hopefully can get involved in a couple of years' time in the save. And going forward a little bit further in time before we start things off for today's episode with that derby against RB Leipzig, we have at the next gen list for this season, even though it doesn't actually say anything on there in terms of our players, apart from the fact that it actually does above the article, but in 33rd place for the first time, we do have a player on this list. It is our signing from the start of the season. And it's Sebastian Escobar, good to see there. Our young wonder kid here at Locomotive Leipzig in 33rd on that next gen list. But now we have gone for where we need to be for the start of today's episode. We can recap our results in four games that we have played off the back of that one that we did get through yesterday. Thankfully, we picked up points in the games you'd expect us to. Obviously, lost to Bayern Munich at home. Not too disappointed with that one because thankfully our form around that has been quite good. Picking up wins over Schalke, Hamburg and Bochum. We were helped in the top and tail of those games by the fact that before both of those, they lost their managers, those teams. Schalke, Scott Parker decided to leave and go to Aston Villa. So not too sure he's actually got the worst 
of that deal. Probably Aston Villa, Schalke might be better off, but we picked up a 2-0 win there away from home thanks to goals to Krasnick in the first half and Bushwari in the second. As you can see, picked up a couple of niggly injuries in that game, but thankfully didn't keep either of those players out for too long. And in the end, it was only a game against Bayern Munich coming up, which was not one we were expecting to pick up points in. And we did suffer a 1-0 defeat thanks to a first half goal from Ali Wahi. That does mean he's not at RB Leipzig these days. He transferred to Bayern Munich in January this season. So we don't have to deal with him in this first game of today's episode, RB Leipzig, for a couple of years worth, cashing in on him for £77 million. But off the back of that, a mad game against Hamburg. We'll show you guys the goals from this one, and I'll try to explain what actually happened. It was a game I was expecting to win quite handsomely because both Hamburg and the team we played off the back of this in Bochum were the two teams in the relegation zone. And if we picked up wins in these games, they would be guaranteed to be going down and thankfully go off to a really hot start in this game in a couple of seconds. Escobar got on the score sheet, and then a few minutes later, it was Krasnicki off the back of a deflected cross from Daniel Cueto to 2 0 up early. And then at the 15 minute mark, I thought we put this game to bed. Benjamin Bushuari, his header came off the post but thankfully was there to bundle home the rebound. And at half time, I took off some players to try and make sure we kept them fresh for some upcoming games. And it nearly backfired. Right off the back of half time, Hamburg did grab a goal back there through Novoa. And yet again, he was in the action here. 10 minutes into the second half, squared that one nicely for Galilovic. And they made it 3-2, and that made things very interesting in the latter stages of this game. And then it felt like we were going to do a right bottle job with 20 minutes left. Suslov off the back of another good ball from Novoa. Chips our goalkeeper. But thankfully, in the first minute of added time, we eventually grab a winner. Daniel Cueto slots through Amadori. And we escape with a one goal win. Definitely going to try and hold off before I make substitutions yet again like I did in this game. Unfortunately, Billy Comedio, he was missing for this one with a slight injury. We brought on Omar Colley for Tom Gale in the second half and our defense just fell to absolute pieces. Also Dibbling as well as Atilgan came on for our wingers. And for some reason, those changes really put us on a downward spiral in that second half. But thankfully... That late Amadori goal did mean we still picked up all three points and thankfully got off to a similar start in our next game against Bochum. We were up 3-0 at halftime. They grabbed one back with a few minutes left, but thankfully this time it was too little too late and Thibaut Cliche off of the bench did pick up a goal to make it 4-1. And that does mean that already both Hamburg and Bochum are relegated to the two Bundesliga. And also we are now officially safe in the Bundesliga for next season, albeit now our hopes are a bit higher than that, because as you can see, with five games left in the season, we are up in sixth on the table. So currently, that would be a Europa League group based spot. We are three points clear of Hoffenheim, and it's a further six points back to the second team we play in today's episode. And I track Frankfurt in their game in between now and then, like ours, is a bit of a difficult one. They take on Wolfsburg up in third. If we can win both these games, in today's episode, I'm pretty sure that would lock us in for European football, depending on what some of those teams further back do on that second match day, but they have played one more game. It might be a case of too little too late if they were to try and catch us, if we can pick up a win in this derby in the first game of it. today's episode. And that derby is against RB Leipzig. These guys in very good form ever since that cup game we played against them in the second round. Earlier this season, as you can see, they come into this one off the back of a draw in the first leg of a Europa League quarterfinal. But before then, some good wins over the likes of Hamburg, Bochum and Eintracht Frankfurt. So to be fair, we are the best opposition they've played in a little while in terms of the Bundesliga. And without Al Uwahi, it will be interesting to see how they line up. But hopefully, we can pick up a good result and pick up a win for the first time in a Bundesliga derby. And also for the first time, we take these guys on away from home as well. So it could be an interesting affair here. Probably a game we're not expected to win. But if we could pick up a point from this one, it would be quite nice. One injury concern going into this first game of today's episode, Alessandro Dorenzo, he is out with a slight niggle. Two more days, so it does mean that Yuri Bass will start this one. To be fair, he's actually had a few starts since yesterday's episode anyway, but Dorenzo did step in for that Bochum game and did perform quite well. It also means that Pierce or Tug comes up from our second team. That is because one of the other players we signed earlier this season 
is currently out injured as well. So a couple of left back injuries in the squad, but thankfully still have a couple to fill those spots. But apart from that, we are at full strength and hopefully can pick up at least a point from this first game in today's episode. But as I said, it probably is a little bit unlikely, definitely targeting that Eintracht Frankfurt game. And hopefully we can pick up a win there that should take us a long way towards securing European football for next season, albeit not really too sure if that would be a hindrance or not. I do suspect next season might be a bit tougher, especially if we've got European football to deal with as well as another season in the Bundesliga. But that could be very dependent on what transfer budget we do get at the end of the season. These days we are guaranteed a payout of around about £50 million. It could go up a little bit more if we finish in one of those European spots like it currently looks like we might be doing so hopefully we get a good transfer budget to work with at the start of next week but it's time to get into this first game of today's episode and hopefully can pull off an upset result here away from home but RB Leipzig have been in good form for a long time the likes of Guardiola still at the back but we'll be interested to see if they're just backing a little bit up front off the back of that sale of Ali Wahi but hopefully we can do a decent job here away from home as I said our first away derby so far I've played them twice both games were at home. We bet them in the cup largely thanks to an early red card, which they picked up, but then unfortunately suffered defeat in the Bundesliga clash a couple of weeks later, I believe it was, but early stages. This looks like a pretty even game. Billy Comedio has picked up a yellow card. Hopefully that's not something that proves too costly. I've noticed we aren't as strong at the back, making changes to our centre back. So hopefully that's something that we can avoid during the course of this game. And the first highlight here is a free kick in favour of RB. It was a bit of a weak pass there to Nkunku, but unfortunately couldn't quite get on the end of it. Goes back there to Kiwior, who did take that free kick, but RB Leipzig here takes some time to build out from the back in the pouring rain at the Red Bull Arena. Arnau Tenas comes out and plays that one yet again to the centre-back. Still this time, they pick out Vardiol these days in real life, of course, the Manchester City centre-back, and they still try and find some space here, but so far we have been doing a decent job, probably shouldn't say that because now there's definitely a chance they will get on the front foot and Espindola just inside the byline, looks far post, it's a header but thankfully that was pretty safe, never really threatened the goal and it is still nil all coming up to the half hour mark. As another highlight is about to start and yet again a very similar fashion as well, very similar spot there for a free kick which Kiwi all will take, thankfully in Kunku that pass doesn't quite link up, a little bit too much depth on it and we play that one back to Ivizic, he's been pretty good off the back of that absolute shocker against Dortmund a couple of episodes ago, and of course, had a bit of a shocker yesterday for that second goal, which was scored by Arminia Bellefeld. Thankfully, we're keeping the ball quite nicely here off the back of winning it. Now, Campanelli tries to play that over the top for Amadori Cueto with a shot, but unfortunately, he was a mile offside and also doesn't put it in the back of net. Now, Yuri Bass has picked up a yellow card that's a little bit concerning with a bit of a drop-off back to our next left-back option on the bench without Dorenzo for today's episode, but a few minutes off the back of that previous highlight this time, it is us who try to play out from the back in this derby, we get that one up to Bushuari, cuts inside, but that pass is poor, and lots of space here for Espindola down this left hand side, and unfortunately, he beats Ivizic at his near post, nothing Camillo can do on that yellow card, a poor pass there from Bushuari. And we go down 1-0 in what so far has been a pretty even game. Unfortunately, that one was straight into the path of Stiller. Not a good option there. Looking for Daniel Cueto. And Espindola just curves that one inside that near post. And unfortunately, we suffer a counter-attacking goal and go 1-0 down here in this derby. Hopefully, we can grab a goal back before half time. But there is only a couple of minutes left, albeit... A corner in our favour, Bushuari picks out Tom Garland. Somehow Arnau Tennis pokes that one onto the post and catches it. That's some of the best goalkeeping work I've seen on Football Manager this year. And of course it comes from the opposition. Now Bass on a yellow card, he commits a foul. I hate it. Oh, why did I put him in the team? I had to because Dorenzo was injured. Okay. So we're down to 10 men yet again, just like yesterday's episode, obviously Ortag will probably have to come on, albeit maybe Mong Louis is a better option for someone like Daniel Cueto, and it does mean that we can move Tom Gale out to left back for the remainder 
of this game. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll just pop out the tactic screen so I can do this a little bit more clearly in terms of putting players in the right position. But obviously that doesn't help our chances much like that red card to Escobar in yesterday's episode. Now it is one, two yellow cards to Yuri Bass and Dorenzo will be coming straight back in the team for that second game of today's episode. Obviously, don't need to get Tom Gale to ease off tackles, but that really hurts us. That is not the highlight we wanted late in that first half. And Zayn Mon Louis already has also picked up a yellow card. So we're in lots of trouble here defensively and a few players on poor ratings as well. But one nil down in the game, which actually stats-wise, we've looked quite good in apparently but that red card is going to make life really tricky for us in the second half. We are going to make a couple of substitutions with those poor ratings that we do have out there. Obviously not going to change centre back because no more options in that position apart from Miguel Chaiwa, but just putting in that tactic so we can check out these ratings. Racine Bullock on a 6.4 will bring on Chaiwa in his place and also Bushuari that pass, which did lead to the goal. Osman and Tilgan can come on for him. And hopefully we can find a way like we did in that Armenia Bitherfeld before the 90 minute mark to grab a goal back. But against a team like RB Leipzig, I don't think that's too likely. We're going to tell the guys that that first half was disappointing. Hopefully they respond. But obviously this is going to be really tough taking on team and especially an informed team like RB Leipzig, unlike a team from the division below us in yesterday's episode. But so far, 10 minutes into the second half, we're doing an okay job, at least in terms of keeping them quiet. I'd hope that be the case. It's just going to be in terms of our attacking creativity without it someone like Daniel Cueto. But the first highlight comes with 25 minutes left. It is a throw in to RB Leipzig. Paul Owens, that one goes back there to Fred Tessie. It did look like there. They were a bit fortunate to get that ball in the air. Josco Vardiol picks up a yellow card for some reason. But I think that's all she wrote, unfortunately. In the Bundesliga games this season, it will be RB Leipzig who pick up the win. Lima gets that ball, was a little bit to and fro from that throw, but RB Leipzig do win it. And unfortunately, it's 2-0. And that's probably all she wrote. Both our centre backs having an absolute shocker, but no real options on our bench to replace them. But Sebastian Escobar on a 6.5 just picked up a yellow card. Nico Benedetti can come on for him. And also, we may as well chuck Krasnicki on attack for the last couple of minutes of this game to see if that can help us grab a goal back. But don't think it's too likely. Unfortunately, that's probably all she wrote. 2-0 and very shortly off the back of that goal. Now it's a corner here to RB Leipzig. Starting on the front foot here in front of their home fans. Thankfully, that one comes off the post. We hit it away. Krasnicki with a chance to do something on the counter-attack. But unfortunately, can't quite find Amadori. Obviously, Gvardiol, a bit more of a higher quality player marking our striker today. We make our way up to the last 15 minutes. Might be time for us to make our final substitution. Krasnicki is down to a red heart. Tyler Dibbling can come on for him. That'll be our last sub, but don't think it's going to make too much difference. Hopefully a player like Tom Gall doesn't pick up a yellow card because that could mean he would be suspended for that second game of today's episode. A few players are sitting on yellow cards. As I speak of it, Luca Campanelli picks up one. That might mean Florian Huxa has to come in for him in that clash with Eintracht Frankfurt. Adeyemi does get a shot off, thankfully. That one comes off the post. So to be fair, we're probably a bit fortunate here to only be losing by two goals to nil, but obviously that red card to Yuri Bass, a big difference maker since then. It has been completely. RB Leipzig, unfortunately, didn't make the most of us playing decently in that first half when we hit 11 men and we suffer a 2-0 defeat to our crosstown rivals, and unfortunately, in the Bundesliga at least, we have not picked up a win against these guys this season. But hopefully, that won't dent our chances of European football too much. As we'll tell the guys we're disappointed with that result, obviously won't get too harsh on them because the red card would have had quite a significant impact on that result. I'll say we learned a lot from that one, and we usually pick up cards anyway, not too worried. So far, the Eintracht Frankfurt result against Wolfsburg hasn't quite come through, so we'll check on that before we come back for that second game of today's episode. Hopefully, they don't pick up a win in that one, and if we pick up one, that should mean they can't overtake us, and we will secure European football for next season, but we haven't quite got the job done yet as we suffer a 2-0 defeat with 10 men against RB Leipzig.
and we are back about to get stuck into the second game of today's episode. And to be fair, it might not matter as much as I was thinking. If this does come true, the race for the coefficient rankings, Germany currently in quite a good spot, so potentially could get an extra team in the Champions League. Not too sure if that means the lower down spots for the Europa League and that Conference League playoff drop down a position in the Bundesliga, but obviously that would give us a little bit more wiggling room if that was the case. And as you can see, a decent gap there between Germany and the likes of Italy, France and Spain. So hopefully the German nations continue to do a decent job in Europe this season and they can make sure that another Champions League spot does go to a team from the Bundesliga. But we're about to take on on track Frankfurt. As I said, a win here would almost guarantee us a spot in Europe for next season. Obviously that could change now with that German coefficient. But these guys have got a little bit of an eye on the semi-finals of the Europa League where they will be taking on RB Leipzig in a week and a half's time. They come into this one shortly off the back of a draw with Sevilla in the second leg of the quarterfinal. But around that, their Bundesliga form has been very, very average. Lost to Wolfsburg, RB Leipzig, and before then a draw against Hertha Berlin. With this game being at home, I'm hopeful we can pick up that win which is needed and more or less wrap up a European spot for next season. But unfortunately, we've got lots of suspensions and injuries to deal with which is going to make our task a little bit tougher. Omar Colley's injured. That wouldn't have impacted us with same on the Wii still available. But Yuri Bass, Luca Campanelli, and Nicolo Amadori all suspended red card and too many yellow cards for the latter two of those players. And also injuries to Nikola Ivozic and Tyler Dibling. So it does mean lots of changes to our team for this game. Jason Minsky comes onto the bench, as does Nino Gurk as our backups down that right-hand zone. In terms of the first team, Dorenzo's back. Also, Florian Huxa comes in for the suspended Luca Campanelli and for the injured Ivisic is Josh Griffiths, who, to be fair, should have featured a lot more in the cup competitions. Being a cup goalkeeper, hopefully, he can prove why he should have been starting those games instead of our regular first-choice goalkeeper. But hopefully, we can make the most of the fact that Eintracht Frankfurt have been slipping up of late in the Bundesliga, also Hoffenheim still behind us off the back of a draw against Bochum, which was quite surprising, but that does mean we still find ourselves in sixth spot and currently in the Europa League group phase, which would be quite nice. And hopefully we pick up a win here. And as I said, that should be enough to make sure that we will be in Europe for our second season up in the Bundesliga. And hopefully those injuries don't impact us too much as well as those suspensions. Lots of squad numbers to get through here. We'll just whip through those very quickly. Hopefully, these won't offend too many of you guys. Actually, Nino Gurk will make 37 because he's a winger, but obviously these players, ones that we don't really want to use, but we might be forced into it with all the suspensions and injuries we are dealing with going into the second game of today's episode. There's Eintracht Frankfurt. It's a team, I think, at home we might be able to handle. Obviously, still got the likes of Alex Scott. will be interesting to see if they're still playing him as a wing back. but time for us to show these guys what we're all about. Of course, our former senior affiliate here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. Also up front, actually forgot about that. Thibaut Cliche starts and Jakubus Alue makes an appearance for the first time in quite a while. Our top goal scorer from last season when we did win the two Bundesliga. So lots of changes for the second game of today's episode. And still quite a few players who are on yellow cards in particular. Both our center backs. That's a little bit concerning, but hopefully we still find a way to win this one. Alex Scott this time playing as a defensive midfielder. And there's that table, as you can see, a win here, especially with what that should do for the goal differential. Should be enough for us to make sure we will be in Europe for next season. And hopefully at home, we can put out a good performance of late on camera. Our home form hasn't been too good, albeit did beat by Leverkusen in that second game of yesterday's episode. Another team which has been slipping up a little bit lately, albeit they did pick up a result on that most recent match day, so it does mean they haven't quite become in touching reach of us, but good little twist there from Krasnicki and a chance for us here to get on the attack. Tubo Cliche thumps that one into the crossbar and thankfully he does because he was a mile offside, but the first highlight isn't much of one, but it does look like here at the moment, touch wood, that we are on the front foot. As I say that, of course, Eintracht Frankfurt start to get a couple of shots off, but we are still locked up at nil all about halfway through this first half as Racine Bullock now picks up a yellow card. He can't be too far away from another suspension. And yet again, our left back has picked up a yellow card. We'll give him to ease off tackles. It didn't work though with Yuri Bass. That is something that hopefully 
will work with Alessandro Dorenzo. And the next highlight comes at the 36 minute mark. Dorenzo plays that one in to Tom Gowner. Escobar, nice ball there for Dorenzo. Played well in that 4 1 win over Bochum. His first start for a little while. Nice square there for Bullock. It's not though, because Tutu comes out and intercepts that. And hopefully, we don't get done on the counter attack. Tom Gow, good interception. But now they get the ball back and might have an overlap inside the box. But thankfully, Comedio with a good stop there. We pump that one deep. Cliche up front, probably not as good in the year as someone like Amadori. That's a pretty fluky block, though. And we nearly win that ball back through Racine Bullock. But unfortunately, Eintracht Frankfurt with a chance to get us here again on the counter attack. Billy on the edge of the box. Comedio takes down Lindstrom. And I think that might get given. Our discipline in today's episode might be what costs us. I'm not too sure if that was too deliberate, but it looked pretty clumsy. It's a penalty, and hopefully Josh Griffiths can save us from going 1-0 down and what is turning out to be a pretty miserable episode. Colin Moani, he goes the right way, does Griffiths, but unfortunately can't quite get to it. His 33rd goal of the season, he must be being the man in the Europa League, but we go 1-0 down thanks to a penalty, and unfortunately Griffiths does take a step to go the right way, can't quite get there. 1-0 behind, need to demand more here because this would not be a good result at home. We need to pick up points, but obviously, Eintracht Frankfurt have started to get on the front foot, especially off the back of that penalty, which we did give away. 1-0 down, definitely want a goal in the second half to at least make sure that they only escape with a point from this game. Going to make some changes at halftime. Dorenzo not playing well, so Pierce Ortag can come on. We'll take a bit of a risk there on one of our youngsters, and also Bushuari and Cliche also struggling. Atilgan and Yakuba Salue will come off the bench. Hopefully Salue can find his goal-scoring touch from last season. And in fact, we may as well make one more sub while we're here as well, because of course Racine Bullock is on a yellow card, so Miguel Chaiwa can come on for him. So lots of changes there at halftime. I want a much better display in the second half, and hopefully that fires up the guys who are still on the pitch. And we can at least grab a goal back. As I said, early days, it is a corner in our favour. Unfortunately, can't find anyone. Queto with a shot. Tom Gale, far post, will poke that home. The assistant referee hasn't put up his flag. I think this will be a goal, mister. Can't quite control that looping shot from Daniel Queto. The goal has been awarded exactly what we wanted off the back of the end of that first half. Queto with a first-time finish. It was actually going in that top left corner, but Mr. with a pretty good save. But thankfully, Tom Gale, right place, right time. We make it one all. That's at least the result we want from this game. But a win would be absolutely superb. Should guarantee European football, as I said, for next season. Now, Tom Gale has picked up a yellow card. That does mean he's going to be suspended for our next match. I think we might take him off because I don't want to go down to 10 men yet again. So our last substitution, Zayn Monlouis will come on for him. He is usually the backup to Tom Gale in that ball-playing defender role. But not an ideal situation. Our goal scorer will come off with a half hour left off the back of us, making it one all. And hopefully we can still find a way to potentially grab an equaliser or at least still be solid at the back and make sure we hold on for a point. Now Florian Huxa picks up a yellow card. That's concerning now. Might have to get him to ease off tackles, albeit not sure if that's a great idea either. We just don't want to go down to 10 men again, but also want to be solid at the back. Lindstrom, nice ball forward there for Colin Mawani. Tries to chip Griffiths, but thankfully a bit too much on that one. I might get him to ease off tackles. Hopefully it doesn't stuff us up down that right-hand side, but that could prove costly. Lots of yellow cards being picked up in today's episode, but obviously kind of balancing the risk there with going down to 10 men like we did in that RB Leipzig game, they play that one over the top and very will attack us down the left, our right-hand side. Or Rick Lindstrom squares that one for Jakic. Stevanovic, good play here from Eintracht Frankfurt. Christian from a tight angle. Thankfully, that one comes off the base of that far post. We clear it away. Salue can't quite control it, but thankfully, Comedio heads that one away. Huxa doesn't do anything to get himself another yellow card, but lots of highlights here off the back of us making our final substitution and also that yellow card hanging over Huxa Escobar. Poor pass and it goes up to Jakic here for Eintracht Frankfurt to be fair. Escobar hasn't been too great and thinking Benedetti might get a run in the first team soon. He started that game against Bochum. Now Queto on the attack though as we didn't win that ball back. 
just inside the byline, plays that one. And for Miguel Chai, it was a sitter, but it comes off the post. What a miss that could be. Still one all, but that was a huge chance for us to take a 2-1 lead. And how costly is that going to prove to be? We make our way inside the last 10 minutes of this game. Still one all, and while I could go a bit more attacking and try and pick up a win in this game, I just think the draw wouldn't be the worst scenario with the fact that we don't want Eintracht Frankfurt to catch us up on points, at least if we pick up a draw, it's still pretty tough for them to close the gap on us in one of those European spots. Now the youngster Ortag is on the ball, plays that to Mon Louis, also now on a yellow card, plays that for Tisalue. Interesting back pass there to Miguel Chaiwa, but thankfully we keep the ball. Krasnicki cuts in, field poor pass there looking for Yakuba Salue. And Eintracht Frankfurt will get a chance here to play out from back. Thiago, nice ball to Kolomowani. This time Chips Griffiths gets it over him. And we fall behind anyway. We'll go attacking. But it's not going right for us in today's episode. 2-1 behind. And are we going to bottle a spot in European football to be fair? As I said earlier in the episode, we might actually be better off not being in Europe for next season. Just focusing again on the Bundesliga and strengthening our team just for that competition in the transfer window. It would still be quite nice. And now it's time for us to put more of these players on an attacking duty. Both the wingers and the wing backs can go on attack and also we'll chuck Chaiwa on support. Make sure we play off a bit of a higher line. And we'll also just get here our goalkeeper to distribute quickly. We might also distribute to the full backs. And we may as well be more expressive while we're at it and play a bit wider as well and hit some early crosses, and we'll see what that does in the late stages of this game, but unfortunately, not happening for us, but there is a corner here in our favour, Mon Louis, wide open, far post, Salue, bundles at home, I think someone kept him onside, and thankfully, we might have robbed them here of two set-piece goals, if this is one, we're going to undo all those changes we did just make, it is a goal, Yakuba Salue, back in the team, he picks up a goal, and now it's time for us to hopefully shut up shop and make sure we do hold on for a draw at the very least. If they go down the other end now and score, I will be filthy. But we'll drop back to positive and also turn off all those things that we did just do. Not too sure how much of an impact they had anyway for a goal that did come from set piece. We'll drop back to a standard defensive line. And hopefully that will be all she wrote. A two-all draw. I would take that in what has been a difficult episode. That's really poor from them there though. No one marking Mon Louis at that far post, despite the fact he's our biggest threat from set piece. One more minute of game time in this one. It is going to be a two-all draw. Not ideal. Would have got a win from that game and could have as well. Chaiwa missing a big chance at one stage during that second half. But thankfully, we came back from a 90th minute goal and got one through Yakuba Salue. Our centre-backs today having a big impact on our goal scoring, unfortunately. Might be missing a couple of those guys for our next game, which is against Hoffenheim, which could be quite interesting with those guys also in the European race. But thankfully, it does now mean if Eintracht Frankfurt do slip up, I'm pretty sure that would guarantee us European football for next season. And with them being in the midst of a Europa League semi-final against RB Leipzig, that is something which could happen if they do take their eyes off of the league. But we'll tell the guys... We'll take that result, didn't play as well as we can, but we do pick up a tool draw, and that's not bad at all, especially considering all those players that were missing through suspension as well as injury. So thankfully, we got something from that game. It does mean we stay six points clear of Eintracht Frankfurt, and probably that's it. Hertha Berlin and Stuttgart could catch us up if they're perfect, and we pick up no points from our last three games. But thankfully, still inside of a European spot off the back, of a late two-all draw at home against Eintracht Frankfurt. So thankfully we escaped from that home clash with quite a few suspensions and injuries with a two-all draw against Eintracht Frankfurt. As you can see, still six points clear of them and still three points clear of Hoffenheim. They lose 3-0 to RB Leipzig at home. These days, RB Leipzig up in second on the Bundesliga table. If Bayern Munich do slip up a little bit, they could be caught, but it is unlikely Bayern do look like a team who are going to pick up the Bundesliga Yet again with only four games left. But that loss from Hoffenheim and that late draw against Eintracht Frankfurt do still put us in a pretty good position to be making Europe for next season, really. One slip up from Eintracht Frankfurt is all we need to confirm it. And also, next up we take on Hoffenheim. Those guys have been slipping up quite a bit recently, at least 
in their last couple of matches around a Europa Conference League quarterfinal. They are also in a semi-final of that competition, taking on Espanyol. So quite a few of the teams around us are in the later stages of Europe, so that could help us out when we take them on. Obviously, it wasn't the case with Eintracht Frankfurt. And to be fair, for that Hoffenheim game, a couple more players are suspended because of yellow cards in Tom Gall and Racine Bullock, but hopefully with that one being at home, we can pick up a slightly better result with the likes of Amadori, Ivizic, Campanelli and Basel being available for that game. If we pick up a win there, that probably seals our place in Europe for next season, albeit don't know if this game will come back for in tomorrow's episode. We'll come back a bit later on to make sure we can reveal the transfer budget as well as the end of season review, and hopefully we can just make sure we do secure a spot in Europe for our second season in the Bundesliga here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. But that will do it for today's episode. Unfortunately, a 2-0 defeat to RB Leipzig, not helped by that red card in the first half to Yuri Bass. And then we got a late draw at home against Eintracht Frankfurt. It does keep us in a pretty good spot to secure European football for next season. In our last three games, if you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow and wrap up the season, probably take on Hoffenheim off camera, and we'll come back either for both Fortuna Dusseldorf and FC Cologne. To be fair, those are two games we should be winning, or just one of them. It does depend how much is riding on those final couple of games of the season and that result that we do pick up against Hoffenheim. As I said, I'll probably play that one off camera just to make sure it's not going to be too long of an episode tomorrow. But you'd like to think that draw against Eintracht Frankfurt was enough for us to hopefully get some European football for next season, especially with one of their eyes on that Europa League semi-final against RB Leipzig, albeit their last three Bundesliga games. Apart from that, Hoffenheim one do come against teams in the bottom area of the table, but hopefully they slip up in one of those games and that can secure us a place in Europe anyway. But we'll come back tomorrow and wrap up our first season in the Bundesliga and hopefully get some European football and a good transfer budget to work with to make sure our squad doesn't struggle with that because that is definitely something that is on my mind at the moment. That could be a bit brutal next season with a small transfer budget, but hopefully we'll get a big one in tomorrow's episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Don't know how